In the once prosperous land of Veron, a tale of darkness unfolds. This ancient kingdom, known for its lush forests and towering castles, was ruled by King Thane, a leader celebrated for his wisdom and justice. Under his reign, Verun flourished, becoming a beacon of prosperity and peace. However, peace was not to last. As the years passed, a sinister plot brewed within the castle walls. Betrayal, fueled by greed and envy, led to King Thane's untimely demise. Poisoned by his closest advisers, he died an unjust death, his legacy tarnished and his kingdom left in turmoil. With his passing, the land of Verone spiralled into chaos, its once glorious days fading into memory. Decades passed, and the kingdom that King Thane so lovingly nurtured became but a shadow of its former self. Its people, now living under the rule of corrupt leaders, yearned for the days of Thane's just rule. It was during these dark times that an eerie phenomenon occurred. On a night when the moon was veiled by shadow, a figure rose from the ancient royal crypt. It was Thane, but not as the people remembered him. His once kind visage was replaced by a hollow, ghostly appearance. His noble features twisted by the torment of betrayal and an unquenchable thirst for retribution. Now known as the Hollow King, Thane's spirit roamed the decaying halls of his former castle. Clad in tattered royal garb, his presence was both majestic and terrifying. The Hollow King's eyes, once a warm brown, were now empty sockets, glowing with an eerie, unnatural light. His hands, once used to wield a scepter of peace, were now ghostly extensions, reaching out as if to grasp the kingdom that slipped away from him. The Hollow King's rise was marked by strange occurrences throughout Veron. The forests whispered of his return. The winds carried his mournful howl, and the very earth seemed to tremble at his unrest. His once loyal subjects, now mere spirits, began to rise from their graves drawn to their king's call. An army of the undead formed, their spectral forms haunting the countryside. As the Hollow King gazed upon his ruined kingdom from the ramparts of his castle, his desire for power rekindled. He vowed to reclaim Veron, to restore it to its former glory under his eternal rule. But his soul, bound to the realm of the living by the curse of betrayal, sought not only restoration, but vengeance against those who had wronged him. And so, the legend of the Hollow King began to spread. A tale of a fallen monarch who rose from the grave to claim what was once his. The people of Veron, living in fear of this spectral figure, whispered his name in hushed tones, both in awe and dread of his ghostly reign. The stage was set for a conflict that would determine the fate of Veron, a battle between the living and the dead, the just and the vengeful, the past and the present. In a dimly lit tavern, nestled in the heart of Veron's largest city, three distinct figures came together, each carrying a personal reason to oppose the rise of the Hollow King. The first was Kayla, a rogue known for her unmatched agility and skill in stealth. With a sharp mind and a sharper blade, she navigated the underworld of Verone with ease, her motivations as hidden as her movements in the shadows. The second, Sir Gavril, was a knight of unwavering discipline and honor. Clad in armor that bore the scars of many battles, he upheld the ideals of the once great kingdom. Gavril had served under the rule of King Thane and held a deep respect for the fallen monarch but the resurrection of his king as the Hollow King stirred in him a conflict of loyalty and duty. Lastly, there was Matilda, a mage cloaked in mystery. Her knowledge of ancient and arcane arts was unparalleled, her past shrouded in secrets. Matilda's eyes, always scanning her surroundings, sparkled with an intensity that suggested a deep understanding of the supernatural forces at play. Their meeting was no accident. Each had heard rumours of the other's intentions and skills, and they knew that to face the horrors that now plagued Veron, they needed allies. The trio sat at a secluded table, their conversation low and urgent. Kayla's reasons for joining this cause were personal, 
the undead armies of the Hollow King had ravaged her home, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. For Sir Gavril, it was a matter of honour. He could not stand idly by as his once beloved kingdom fell into darkness. Matilda, ever enigmatic, hinted at a greater purpose, one tied to the balance of magical forces. Agreeing to set aside their differences for the greater good, they formed an unlikely alliance. Each brought a unique set of skills to the table. Kayla, with her stealth and cunning, Gavril with his combat prowess and strategic mind, and Matilda with her magical abilities and knowledge of the occult. Their journey began at dawn. The trio ventured into the haunted lands that surrounded the once glorious capital. The forests were thick with fog, and the air was heavy with a sense of unease. They encountered spirits of the past, some mournful, others malevolent. Each encounter tested their resolve and forced them to confront the ghosts of their own pasts. Kayla moved like a shadow, leading the way with her keen senses alert to any danger. Sir Gavril's armour clanked softly with each step, his hand always near the hilt of his sword, ready for battle. Matilda chanted softly under her breath, her spells providing protection and revealing hidden paths through the twisted landscape. As they journeyed deeper into the heart of darkness, the horrors of the present became increasingly tangible. Villages lay in ruin, their inhabitants either fled or turned into mindless minions of the Hollow King. The land itself seemed corrupted, with twisted trees and murky waters reflecting the decay of Veron. The journey of Kayla, Sir Gavril, and Matilda through the haunted lands of Veron was a trek through a landscape of despair and decay. The forests, once vibrant and teeming with life, were now shrouded in an eerie mist, their trees twisted into grotesque shapes, as if reflecting the tortured soul of the Hollow King himself. The air was thick with a suffocating silence, broken only by the occasional distant moan of the undead or the rustling of leaves under unseen feet. As they ventured deeper, they came upon villages that had been ravaged by the Hollow King's armies. Homes stood empty, their doors swinging on broken hinges, windows like gaping eyes staring into nothingness. Here and there, personal belongings were scattered, left behind in the haste of escape, telling silent stories of interrupted lives and shattered dreams. In these desolate places, the trio found remnants of the past that shed light on the Hollow King's tragic transformation. Tattered banners bearing the insignia of King Thane hung limply on the walls, and portraits faded and covered in dust depicted a man of noble bearing, his eyes once filled with kindness and wisdom. Whispers of Thane's story echoed through the ruins. They learned that he was a just and beloved ruler, his reign marked by prosperity and peace. However, betrayal from within his own court led to his downfall. Poisoned and left to die, Thane's demise was the beginning of the curse that would bind his soul to a tormented existence. The betrayal had not only robbed him of his life, but also tethered his spirit to the realm of the living, unable to find peace in death. The most chilling evidence of the Hollow King's despair was his undead army. These spectral soldiers, once loyal warriors of King Thane, now wandered the lands as hollow remnants of their former selves. Clad in rusted armour and wielding weapons that time had not spared, they roamed without purpose. Kayla, Sir Gavril and Matilda encountered these ghostly figures on several occasions. At first, they fought them, clashing in silent battles where the only sounds were the clash of Gavril's sword against spectral shields and the incantations of Matilda's spells. But soon, they realised the futility of it. These were not enemies to be defeated, but souls to be pitied, trapped in an endless cycle of servitude. As they travelled through these haunted lands, each of them wrestled with their own thoughts. Kayla felt a growing anger towards those who had betrayed such a just king, causing so much suffering. Sir Gavril grappled with his sense of honour, wondering how such loyalty could be twisted into this macabre parody of knighthood. 
and Matilda, who understood the forces of magic and curses more than she let on, pondered the nature of the curse binding Thane, sensing that its unravelling would be key to their quest. The journey of Kyla, Sir Gavril and Matilda led them to the ruins of an ancient temple, hidden deep within the heart of a forgotten forest in Verone. This temple, once a place of worship and powerful magic, now lay in ruin, its walls crumbled and overgrown with ivy. The air was thick with the scent of moss and old stone, and the silence was as heavy as the stones that lay scattered on the ground. In the centre of the temple, beneath a collapsed dome that once looked up to the heavens, stood an altar. It was here that the group discovered the sacred relic, an object of immense power, long lost to the annals of history. The relic was a crystal, its surface pulsating with a faint, otherworldly glow. Carved runes covered its base, their meanings obscured by the passage of time. Matilda, with her knowledge of ancient texts and arcane lore, deciphered the runes. They spoke of a ritual, one that could free a soul bound to the earthly realm. The group realized that this relic held the key to liberating the Hollow King's tormented spirit, offering a chance to end his reign of terror. With a mixture of hope and apprehension, they performed the ritual. Matilda chanted the incantations, her voice echoing through the decrepit temple. Sir Gavril stood guard, his sword drawn, while Kayla carefully placed the crystal on the altar. As the ritual reached its climax, the crystal began to vibrate, emitting a blinding light that filled the temple. But then, Something went terribly wrong. The ground shook violently and the air crackled with raw energy. A deafening roar filled the temple as the crystal shattered, releasing a force that had been sealed within for centuries. From the remnants of the crystal emerged a demon, a creature of nightmares, its body a swirling mass of shadows and fire. The demon's eyes burning with malice fixed upon the trio, it had been trapped within the relic as a guardian of the curse, and now, freed from its prison, it sought to unleash its fury upon the world. The temple trembled as the demon unleashed its power, causing the ancient walls to crumble around them. Kayla, quick on her feet, dodged the falling debris, while Sir Gavril raised his shield to protect Matilda, who was stunned by the turn of events. The demon's laughter echoed through the ruins as it began to manifest its full, terrifying form. In that moment, the group realized the gravity of their mistake. By attempting to free the Hollow King, they had inadvertently unleashed a greater evil upon Veron. The demon, now free from its shackles, posed a new and even more dangerous threat. The air was thick with the smell of brimstone and decay, and the once hallowed grounds of the temple were now a battlefield. In the aftermath of the demon's release, Matilda, the mage, found herself at a crossroads. The dire situation demanded drastic measures, and she knew that conventional magic would not suffice against such a formidable foe. With a heavy heart, she turned towards the Forbidden Arts, a path she had long avoided, but now saw as the only viable solution. The Forbidden Magic was a collection of ancient and dark spells, long shunned by the mage community for their dangerous and often unpredictable nature. These spells delved into the darker aspects of magic, drawing power from the shadows and the void. Matilda spent long nights poring over old tomes and scrolls, her eyes growing weary as she deciphered cryptic texts and practiced complex incantations. As Matilda's mastery of the dark arts grew, so did her power. Her spells became more potent, and her ability to manipulate the magical energies around her intensified. Shadows seemed to cling to her, and her eyes took on a new intensity, a reflection of the dark power she now wielded. However, this new path did not come without consequences. Sir Gavril and Kayla began to notice changes in Matilda. There was a certain coldness in her demeanor, a distance that had not been there before. Her once kind gaze now seemed to pierce through them, as if looking into something beyond. Sir Gavril, bound by a code of honor and righteousness, was the first to confront Matilda. He feared the consequences of delving into such dark magic, 
worried that it might corrupt her soul. In a tense exchange, he implored her to reconsider her actions, to find another way to combat the demon. Kayla too expressed her concerns, though her approach was more pragmatic. She knew the dangers of dealing with powers beyond one's control and cautioned Matilda against becoming too reliant on the forbidden arts. Kayla's words were born of experience, of having seen many fall prey to their own ambitions. But Matilda was resolute. She carried within her a secret past, a history intertwined with the very magic she now wielded. Unbeknownst to her companions, her connection to the dark arts ran deeper than mere necessity. It was a part of her heritage, a legacy passed down through generations. This secret burdened her, but also drove her forward, for she believed that her destiny was tied to the use of these powers. The rift within the group grew as Matilda delved deeper into the forbidden magic. Sir Gavril's distrust and Kayla's apprehension created tension that hung in the air. They all understood the gravity of their situation, yet they were divided on the means to confront it. As they journeyed on, the dark magic began to show its effects on Matilda. Her spells became more effective against the demon's minions, but each use of the forbidden arts took a toll on her. Dark veins began to appear on her arms, creeping up towards her heart, a physical manifestation of the magic's corrupting influence. As the group's journey continued, a revelation surfaced that would add a deeply personal dimension to their quest. Kayla the Rogue had thus far been a figure shrouded in mystery, her past a carefully guarded secret. However, as the challenges mounted and the stakes rose, she found it increasingly difficult to keep her history hidden from her companions. One evening, as the trio camped in the shadow of a ruined tower, the conversation turned to their reasons for joining this perilous quest. It was then that Kayla, with a heavy heart, revealed the driving force behind her actions, a deep-seated vendetta against the Hollow King. Years ago, before the rise of the Hollow King, Kayla's family lived in a peaceful village on the outskirts of Veron. Her father was a blacksmith, known for his skilled craftsmanship, and her mother, a healer, was cherished for her kindness. Kayla grew up in a home filled with love and laughter, her days spent playing in the fields and learning the crafts of her parents. However, this idyllic life was shattered when the Hollow King's undead armies swept through the land. Her village, like many others, fell victim to their relentless march. In a single, horrific night, Kayla's world was turned upside down. Her home was destroyed, her parents slain, and her life as she knew it was lost. She narrowly escaped with her life, hiding among the debris as the undead ravaged her village. From that day on, Kayla's heart was filled with a burning desire for vengeance. She honed her skills in stealth and combat, becoming a rogue whose name was whispered in fear among those who crossed her. Her every step, every action was fueled by the memory of that night and the need to avenge her family. Her revelation cast her in a new light for Sir Gavril and Matilda. They now understood the intensity behind her eyes, the relentless determination that drove her. However, this newfound knowledge also brought concerns. Sir Gavril in particular worried that Kayla's desire for vengeance might cloud her judgment, leading her to take risks that could endanger them all. He cautioned her about the dangers of allowing revenge to consume her, warning that it could lead to a path from which there was no return. Matilda, on the other hand, felt a kinship with Kayla's pain. She understood the power of a personal vendetta, having her own hidden reasons for battling the forces of darkness. She offered Kayla a sympathetic ear, providing comfort in the knowledge that she was not alone in her quest for retribution. Kayla's vendetta added a complex layer to the group's dynamics. Her personal stake in the conflict with the Hollow King brought a fierce intensity to their encounters with the undead. Every battle was not just a step towards their goal, but also a chance for Kayla to exact a piece of her revenge. Sir Gavril, a knight whose life had been dedicated to upholding the principles of honour and justice, found himself in a profound moral quandary. 
As the journey with Kayla and Matilda progressed, he was increasingly confronted with situations that challenged his deeply held beliefs and the code by which he had always lived. The Knight's crisis began to manifest as the group encountered more of the Hollow King's undead army. Each battle against these spectral foes, once loyal soldiers of Veron, was a grim reminder of the tragedy that had befallen the kingdom. Sir Gavril, who had once served under King Thane, felt a deep sense of sorrow battling these lost souls. In his heart he knew they were victims, just as much as those they now terrorised. This internal conflict was further compounded by Kayla's relentless pursuit of vengeance and Matilda's delve into forbidden magic. Sir Gavril had always viewed justice as a clear-cut path, but now he found himself in a world where the lines between right and wrong were blurred. He began to question the very nature of their quest. Was their mission to stop the Hollow King truly just, or were they merely contributing to a cycle of violence and retribution? Sir Gavril's crisis reached a peak one night, following a particularly harrowing encounter with a group of undead. As he cleaned the remnants of battle from his armour, he pondered the faces of the undead soldiers they had just vanquished. These men and women had once been protectors of Veron, just like him. They had families, dreams, and a life before the curse. Now, they were nothing more than pawns in a war they had no control over. The knight's thoughts then turned to his companions. Kayla, driven by a personal vendetta, seemed to be consumed by her anger and grief. Matilda, once a guiding light with her knowledge and wisdom, was now shrouded in the darkness of her forbidden magic. Sir Gavril felt a growing sense of isolation, caught between his duty to protect and his uncertainty about the righteousness of their path. Haunted by these doubts, Sir Gavril sought solace in the quiet of the night. He ventured away from their camp, gazing up at the stars that shone over the troubled lands of Veron. In the stillness, he reflected on his life as a knight, the vows he had taken, and the ideals he had sworn to uphold. The weight of his sword in his hand, a symbol of his commitment to justice, now felt heavier than ever. The following morning, Sir Gavril's demeanour had changed. He was more introspective, his actions more deliberate. He continued to fight alongside Kayla and Matilda, but there was a newfound caution in his approach. He sought to find a balance between the necessity of their quest and the preservation of his moral compass. The escalating threat posed by the Hollow King reached a critical point as he amassed his undead army for a massive siege on Verone's last stronghold, the city of Eldhaven. This once thriving metropolis, now a bastion of hope amidst a land overrun by darkness, braced for the onslaught. Kayla, Sir Gavril and Matilda, aware of the impending doom, hastened to Eldhaven, determined to defend it against the encroaching horror. As they approached the city, the scale of the impending battle became apparent. The undead, a seemingly endless tide of lost souls, advanced towards Eldhaven, their ghostly forms converging under the Hollow King's dark banner. The city's walls, once a symbol of protection and strength, now seemed fragile against this relentless horde. Inside Eldhaven, the atmosphere was tense, the city's defenders, a mix of seasoned soldiers and hastily armed citizens, prepared for battle. Barricades were erected, and archers took their positions on the walls. Kayla, Sir Gavril, and Matilda joined the city's commander, offering their expertise and bolstering the defenders' morale. As the undead army drew near, the siege began with a barrage of dark magic from the Hollow King's sorcerers, shattering parts of the wall and opening breaches for the undead to pour through. The defenders of Eldhaven, led by Sir Gavril, met them head on. The knight's sword cut through the spectral enemies with precision, his shield a bulwark against the tide of death. Kayla moved through the chaos like a shadow, her daggers finding their mark in the gaps of the undead's rusted armour. Her agility allowed her to navigate the battlefield with ease, striking swiftly and then vanishing, before retaliation could be made. Matilda, standing atop the battlements, channeled her magic to repel the invaders. Her spells, 
tinged with the darkness of the forbidden arts she had embraced, were more potent than ever. She summoned barriers of arcane energy to block the breaches and unleashed torrents of fire upon the advancing undead, her power a stark contrast against the night sky. The battle for Eldhaven was fierce and unyielding. The city's defenders fought with desperate courage, knowing that their defeat would spell the end for Verone. The unity of Kayla, Sir Gavril, and Matilda became the linchpin of the defense. Their combined strength, each complementing the other, held the lines against the overwhelming forces. As the night wore on, the intensity of the battle reached its zenith. The Hollow King, atop a spectral steed, made his presence known on the battlefield. His appearance spurred his undead army into a frenzied assault, pushing the defenders to their limits. In a pivotal moment, Sir Gavril faced the Hollow King, his sword clashing against the monarch's ethereal blade. Kayla and Matilda provided support, targeting the Hollow King's lieutenants and disrupting his control over the undead army. The battle raged until the first light of dawn crept over the horizon. Exhausted but unyielding, the defenders of Eldhaven, inspired by the bravery of the trio, rallied for a final push. With a concerted effort, they repelled the remaining undead, forcing the Hollow King to retreat. As the dust settled over the city of Eldhaven, a new chapter began to unfold, one that would cast a revealing light on Matilda, the enigmatic mage. In the aftermath of the siege, while the trio assisted in the city's recovery, mysterious figures from Matilda's past began to emerge, unraveling the carefully guarded secrets she had held close. It was during a meeting with Eldhaven's council that the first of these figures appeared. A hooded sage, known to few, recognized Matilda and addressed her not by her assumed name, but as Elindra, a name that caused a visible shock to pass through her. The sage revealed that Matilda, or Elindra, as she was once known, was a member of the royal court of Veron, a trusted advisor to King Thane himself. The revelation sent ripples of surprise and suspicion through the council chamber. Sir Gavril and Kayla looked at Matilda with a mixture of bewilderment and intrigue, realizing that their companion was far more than she had seemed. Matilda, confronted with her past, could no longer keep her secrets. She confessed to Sir Gavril and Kayla that she was indeed Elindra, a mage of the royal court. Her role had been to advise King Thane on matters of the arcane and to protect the kingdom using her magical abilities. However, her story took a darker turn as she delved deeper into her past. Matilda revealed that she had been part of the ritual that led to Thane's transformation into the Hollow King. The ritual, intended to grant King Thane the power to protect Verone from an imminent threat, had been sabotaged. Unbeknownst to Matilda, dark forces within the court had altered the ritual, turning it into a curse that bound Thane's soul to the realm of the living, transforming him into the Hollow King. The guilt of her unwitting role in Thane's transformation had haunted Matilda for years. She had fled the court, changing her identity and dedicating her life to studying both light and dark magic, hoping to find a way to undo the curse she had helped inflict. Her journey had been a long one, filled with remorse and the desperate need for redemption. The revelation of Matilda's past explained her deep understanding of the curse and her drive to confront the Hollow King. It also shed light on her willingness to delve into forbidden magic as she sought any means to rectify the wrongs of her past. Sir Gavril, though shocked, expressed understanding, recognizing the burden of guilt that Matilda had been carrying. Kayla, though initially wary, saw in Matilda a kindred spirit, both marked by their pasts and driven by a need to set things right. In the wake of Matilda's revelations, the group's journey took them to an ancient tomb rumored to be the resting place of a legendary weapon, the Blade of Verone. This weapon, forged in the kingdom's early days, was said to possess the power to vanquish the undead, a power crucial for their impending confrontations. The tomb was located in a secluded valley, shrouded in mists and guarded by time-worn statues of Veron's greatest warriors. The entrance was marked by a massive stone door, 
carved with intricate symbols and sealed for centuries. Sir Gavril, recognizing the heraldry of Varon on the door, felt a surge of pride and determination. This weapon was a part of his kingdom's legacy, a symbol of the strength and resilience of his people. With the help of Matilda's magic and Kayla's nimble skills, they managed to unlock the ancient seal, and the stone door slowly swung open, revealing the darkness within. The tomb was a labyrinth of corridors and chambers, adorned with murals depicting Verone's history. Cobwebs hung like veils across the passages, and the air was cool and still, as if undisturbed for ages. The group navigated the labyrinth with caution, wary of traps and hidden dangers that such a place might hold. Finally, in the heart of the tomb, they found the Chamber of the Blade of Verun. The chamber was a grand hall, its walls lined with statues of Verun's heroes, each holding a torch that magically ignited as the group entered, casting a warm glow over the space. At the centre of the hall, on a stone pedestal, lay the Blade of Verun. The weapon was magnificent. Its hilt was adorned with precious gems and ancient runes, and the blade itself gleamed with an inner light that seemed to pierce the gloom of the tomb. Sir Gavril approached the pedestal with reverence. As he laid his hands on the sword, a sense of rightness, a feeling of destiny, washed over him. The blade of Verone felt perfectly balanced, as if it had been forged specifically for him. As Sir Gavril lifted the blade, the chamber was filled with a radiant light. The legends were true. The sword possessed an innate power against the undead. Its light was not just physical. It seemed to cut through despair and fear, imbuing the group with renewed hope and determination. The escalation of dark magic and the spreading chaos in Verone did not go unnoticed in the natural and mystical realms. As the land groaned under the weight of the Hollow King's curse, ancient and mythical beasts, long hidden in the depths of forests and the heart of mountains, began to emerge. These creatures, embodiments of Verone's oldest magic, were drawn to the turmoil, each reacting according to their nature and understanding of the unfolding events. The first encounter with these mythical beasts occurred as Kayla, Sir Gavril and Matilda were traversing a dense forest known to be a nexus of natural magic. A thunderous roar shattered the forest's usual tranquility and from the foliage emerged a massive griffin, its eagle-like head screeching a challenge and its lion's body poised to pounce. The griffin, a guardian of the forest, initially perceived the trio as intruders. A tense standoff ensued, with Sir Gavril stepping forward, the blade of Veron in hand, its light seeming to calm the creature slightly. Matilda, using her knowledge of ancient languages, communicated with the griffin, explaining their quest and the threat posed by the Hollow King. The griffin, understanding the gravity of the situation, offered its aid. This majestic creature, a symbol of strength and vigilance, agreed to transport the group across difficult terrains, aiding their journey towards the Hollow King's stronghold. As they continued, more encounters with mythical beasts occurred. In a mist-covered valley, they met a herd of unicorns, creatures of purity and light. The unicorns, sensing the goodness within the group and the righteousness of their quest, granted them safe passage through the valley, a place known for its deceptive enchantments. However, not all encounters were friendly. In the shadowy caves of the Dragontooth Mountains, the group faced a hostile basilisk, its gaze capable of petrifying the unwary. The battle was fierce, with Kayla using her agility to evade the creature's lethal stare, while Sir Gavril, armed with the Blade of Verone, engaged it directly. Matilda, tapping into her magic, shielded them from the basilisk's petrifying gaze. Together they managed to defeat the beast, further solidifying their teamwork and resolve. These encounters with the mythical beasts of Verone added a new dimension to the group's journey. They realized that the land itself was responding to the Hollow King's reign of terror, and that allies could be found in the most unexpected places. 
The alliances they formed with some of these creatures provided them with valuable assistance in navigating the treacherous lands. The Griffin, in particular, became a steadfast ally, its aerial prowess offering them a unique advantage. However, the presence of these mythical beasts also served as a reminder of the imbalance in the natural order caused by the Hollow King's curse. It underscored the urgency of their quest to restore harmony to the land. As they witnessed the effects of the dark magic on these majestic creatures, their resolve to end the Hollow King's reign was only strengthened. The journey of Kayla, Sir Gavril and Matilda, now joined by their newfound mythical allies, culminated in a decisive battle at the Hollow King's castle, a formidable fortress shrouded in dark magic and surrounded by an army of the undead. The castle, once a symbol of Verone's glory under King Thane's rule, now stood as a bastion of terror and despair. Its towering walls, darkened by the curse, were lined with spectral guards, and the air around it was thick with the aura of dark magic. As the group approached, the reality of their task set in. The castle was heavily fortified, and the Hollow King's forces were prepared for their arrival. The undead army, vast in number, formed a near-impenetrable barrier around the fortress. The group knew that a head-on assault would be suicidal. They needed a strategy that combined their strengths and the unique abilities of their allies. Matilda, tapping into her knowledge of dark magic, conjured a shroud of mist to cloak their approach, allowing them to move closer to the castle undetected. Her control over the dark arts had grown and she wielded it with precision, careful not to let it consume her. Sir Gavril, wielding the blade of Veron, led the charge. The sword's radiant light cut through the darkness, and its power against the undead proved invaluable. Each swing of his blade banished the spectral soldiers back to the realm of the dead, clearing a path through the enemy lines. Kayla's role was crucial in infiltrating the castle, her agility and stealth allowed her to move ahead, disabling traps and creating diversions. Her cunning strategies created openings in the enemy's defences, allowing the group and their allies to advance. The mythical creatures too played their parts. The griffon took to the skies, attacking from above and creating chaos among the ranks of the undead. The unicorns, with their purity, provided a barrier of light, protecting the group from the darker magics at play. The battle was fierce and relentless. The air was filled with the clash of steel, the chants of magic, and the cries of the fallen. The group fought with a synergy born of their shared trials, each member complementing the other's strengths. As they fought their way through the undead and breached the castle gates, the true challenge began. Inside the castle, the dark energy was overwhelming. The corridors echoed with the whispers of the past and the very stones of the castle seemed to resist their presence. The final confrontation with the Hollow King was imminent. The group, battered but unbroken, pushed forward through the dark halls of the castle. Each step took them deeper into the heart of darkness, to a final showdown that would determine the fate of Verun. In the heart of the Hollow King's castle, amidst the echoes of battle and the oppressive darkness, the climactic confrontation between Kayla, Sir Gavril, Matilda and the Hollow King unfolded. The battle was fierce, a testament to the King's power and the curse that fueled his wrath. Sir Gavril, armed with the blade of Verun, fought valiantly, his sword clashing against the King's ethereal weapon. Matilda unleashed her magic, a blend of light and dark, while Kayla darted through the shadows striking with lethal precision. In the heat of the battle, a critical moment arrived. With a powerful thrust of his blade, illuminated by Matilda's magic, Sir Gavril struck the Hollow King, his sword piercing the spectral armor. The King let out a wail of anguish, a sound that resonated through the castle and beyond. As the King's form began to dissipate, a sense of relief momentarily washed over the group. But this victory was short-lived. From the remnants of the Hollow King, a new and more terrifying entity emerged. The demon, 
previously sealed within the sacred relic and inadvertently released during their earlier quest, now revealed its full, terrifying might. This creature, a manifestation of pure darkness and malevolence, towered over them, its form constantly shifting, a swirling vortex of shadows and fire. The demon's emergence filled the air with a suffocating aura of dread, its eyes burning like coals fixed upon the group with malevolent intent. The air crackled with dark energy, and the very stones of the castle trembled under its power. The group realized the gravity of their situation. In their quest to defeat the Hollow King, they had unwittingly unleashed a far greater evil. This demon, once contained by the sacred relic, was now free to unleash its wrath upon Verone. Matilda, recognizing the markings and energy of the demon, understood the depth of their plight. This was no ordinary demon. It was an ancient being, a force of destruction that had been sealed away by the combined efforts of Veron's most powerful mages centuries ago. The battle against the demon was unlike any they had faced. Traditional weapons and magic seemed to barely affect it. Sir Gavril's swings with the blade of Veron, though powerful, could not find purchase in the demon's nebulous form. Kayla's agility and stealth, so effective against corporeal foes, were of little use against this ethereal terror. Matilda's magic, even with her control over dark arts, struggled to counter the overwhelming power of the demon. The demon, reveling in its freedom, unleashed chaos around them. It summoned dark minions from the shadows, and the very walls of the castle seemed to warp and twist under its influence. The group fought desperately, not just for their own survival, but for the fate of all Veron. As the battle raged, the group was forced to retreat, regrouping to find a new strategy. They realized that to defeat this demon, they would need more than just physical strength and magic. They would need a plan that could outwit and overpower an ancient being of pure darkness. In the midst of their desperate battle against the demon, a shocking revelation unfolded that changed the course of their struggle. Matilda, through her arcane knowledge and understanding of the dark arts, discerned a crucial truth about their adversary. The demon itself was the source of the curse that had transformed King Thane into the Hollow King. This revelation struck them with the force of a thunderbolt, the curse that had plagued Verone for so long, the source of so much suffering and despair, was not a result of the ritual gone awry, as they had believed, but the work of this ancient demon, seeking to free itself from its imprisonment within the relic. With this new understanding, the group's strategy shifted. They realized that to defeat the demon and lift the curse, they would need to re-imprison it within a new vessel. Matilda, bearing the weight of her past actions and her responsibility for the demon's release, made a courageous decision. She would use her mastery of dark magic to bind the demon once more, merging her powers with the Blade of Veron, the only object with the purity and strength to contain such a malevolent force. This plan, however, came with a grave cost. To bind the demon, Matilda would have to sacrifice herself, channeling her life force into the ritual. Knowing the risks, she made her decision with a heavy heart, but a clear mind, determined to right the wrongs of her past and save Verone. As the battle raged around them, Matilda began the incantation, her voice rising above the chaos. Sir Gavril, understanding the sacrifice Matilda was about to make, fought with renewed vigor, protecting her as she chanted the ancient words. Kayla, realizing what was happening, lent her support, fighting back the demon's minions with a fierce determination. The ritual reached its climax as Matilda merged her magic with the Blade of Verone. A blinding light enveloped her, and the demon, sensing its impending doom, unleashed a furious assault. But it was too late. The light from the blade expanded, forming a barrier around the demon, drawing it in. Matilda's form began to fade, her essence flowing into the ritual, her final act of redemption. 
With a deafening roar that shook the very foundations of the castle, the demon was resealed, the light from the blade contracting into a new, purified relic. The curse was lifted, the land of Veron freed from its long nightmare. The aftermath of the battle was a time of mixed emotions, grief for the loss of Matilda, relief that the curse was lifted, and a sense of hope for the future. Sir Gavril, holding the new relic, vowed to protect it and the kingdom, taking up the mantle of protector in Matilda's memory. He emerged from the conflict a changed man, more resolved than ever to uphold the ideals of justice and honor. Kayla, her vendetta against the Hollow King fulfilled, and her path of vengeance at an end, found herself at a crossroads. With the curse lifted and peace returning to Veron, she chose to disappear into the shadows once more. Her future, a mystery. She left behind a legacy of bravery and a reminder of the cost of vengeance. Verone, though forever changed by the events that had unfolded, began to heal. The land, freed from the shadow of the curse, started to recover its former beauty. The people, inspired by the sacrifices and heroism of Kayla, Sir Gavril and Matilda, looked forward to a future of peace and prosperity.